Well, this is the entrance to a great little place. Um, a friend of mine, Nigel, owns it. He's been there for over 20 years. It is a, they build boats here. They have a little restaurant and a bar. And it's a really quaint little place. One of my favorite places in the Philippines. We'll be meeting the owner here in just a few minutes. This is Tambobo Bay. There's only a few protected bays on Negros where you can put a sailboat or any kind of boat for that matter, and this is one of them. It's about 30 minutes from Bakong, where we live, and we go there from time to time. Basically, when we go there, we go there to see Nigel at his place, and you'll be seeing him in a minute here. But there's some derelict boats that have been there for many years. Uh, a lot of people, if you bring a sailboat to the Philippines, which I've interviewed several people who have done that, you have to uh, find a place to put it, and Tambo Bay is the place because you can put your boat there, and also you can get work done on it. They've so got, you know, skilled people. Yeah. Nice can you just put that on? Because you're a very soft-spoken man. Uh, sorry about that. It's all right. Under my glasses. Yeah. So, yeah, have as much line as you want. Try not to uh, pull you over. Yeah. Just got to reach my beer, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, shall I sit? You don't well, want me. To you, whatever you're comfortable with. You don't with, want yeah. me full faced. Yeah. I crack cameras. Yeah. <sighs> sit here then. You want some, some books to sit on top of? Or? Yeah, Needs yeah. something to get high. Yeah. yeah. I resemble that remark. Yeah. No, oh, okay. Okay, so I'm here with. Uh, my friend Nigel, and uh, what's the name of your, your bar now? Tongo Sail Inn. Tongo Sail Inn. That's a sort of a yachty term. And it's in Tambobo Bay, and how long have you been here again? In this place, 22 years. That's amazing. Now, it's not just a bar and restaurant. You also have a, a, a marina here, or a boat repair? Or... We build boats. For, you build boats, yeah, wow. For export, generally. Yeah. You're, a, you're a sailor, right? You've been sailing? I sailed for 40 years before I found this spot. Forty years. Raise kids and Wow. Yeah. That's I mean that is just so impressive, forty years of sailing. No, yeah, well, it's uh, you have to work to keep it going. But I was trying to teach um, people that wanted to become cruisers but were in doubt and uh, so they joined us uh, and supported the boat um, so that we could keep going. So sometimes we had up to ten on board. Really? Um, all wanting eager to learn. Um, Every, um, every facet. If someone, say someone that's in their retirement age, say 50s or 60s, and they, they just, they're really interested in sailing, they'd like mm -hmm. to learn how to sail, how long would it take to train them where they could be good enough, they could own a, a small boat and actually sail like from here to Hawaii or here to uh, Cambodia or someplace like that? I mean, to get to that skill level, because mm. it's not easy, is it? Um, it takes time. It's a lifetime, really. But um, uh, everybody says I want to learn to sail, I said, well that takes 15 minutes. But the, uh, like you mentioned, the, um, the other facets are more, uh, more involved, like mechanics, plumbing. You have to be a jack of all trades, don't you? We've got to try and, and cover all facets when you're out at sea. And mm. uh, there are occasions when we've hit pretty heavy weather yeah. and we've been diverted by a thousand miles from our a original destination. Miles. But a whole new, whole new cycle starts, mm. a new adventure. Wow. What's uh, the farthest you've ever sailed by yourself? Um, God, I can't recall on my own. I, I used to sail a lot on my own in Europe, mm. but... Well, with, I mean, with boring. people on board. I mean, with people on board, how far? Oh, on, on board, we've done thousands of miles. Wow. But um, through, through different ports and anchorages. Mm. Um, yeah, many places. Have you ever had um, any run-ins with pirates or um, seen any pirates or...? I've always said that um, the only pirates we've ever met really are in uniform at each end of the trip. <laughs> oh, the, the officials, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we had the same thing when I worked on cruise ships. They used to have to money under the table in order to get the ship cleared. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, it's... Um, I mean, we've had a few, what, potential incidences that, uh, where we've sort of covered ourselves. Um, hmm. There's been anchorages where we've been warned that the, the rascals are going to raid us tonight. Um, where would that be? What part of the world? Uh, Northern New Guinea and, and hmm. uh, those regions, Indonesia. But it's not nice to 
indicate any particular place because it could happen here or anywhere right. else. It's just that uh, there are opportunists around. And uh, so we used to do things like, um, I was one time, we were threatened, and so I, I got my, my uh, very pistol out, which looked like a gun. I don't like guns, but um, I went down below Oh, this is another time. Well, I went down below, got the berry pistol, got my gin and tonic, because it was tropics, you know, <laughs> and uh, sucking away, and then I just pulled out the pistol and sort of pretended to pull it out of a holster and put it up in the air, and I, you know, wiped it like that. And, okay, yeah, put that back. Um, that worked on that evening. There were other times where um, we felt really threatened, somebody was overtaking us, and they'd been following us a long time. So I went down below and uh, I, I wet my face and I put some white flour powder over me and a few lipstick dots <laughs> and then I filled my mouth with UHT custard <laughs> and a packet and I went outside and I was feeling, look, yeah. appearing really sick and then I threw the custard over the side, you know, they didn't come near us. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant. And then other times we've had, I always used a back cabin, every boat I built, I always put a stern cabin in, um, so we could separate from the crew or the kids. And um, uh, that way everybody felt their independence. Um, but I always kept a floodlight next to the bunk. Mm. And two or three times my wife would give me a nudge and say, there's someone on deck. On deck? Yeah, and the women are always more alert especially me after a couple of beers and <laughs> sailing all day. Wow. And um, so you'd, you'd look out and you, you, know, you, you can see some movement and so you get the floodlight and just flash it in their eyes, both sides, and they'll throw themselves over the side. They don't know what's hit them. It's, um, wow. a, they a they give a pretty powerful lights, like a 2,000 candle oh, power. Yeah, yeah, there's one here. <laughs> mm. but that's scary. They're actually on board your boat. Mm. And yeah, they climb up the chain. They're desperados, but they're opportunists primarily. We've had all the clothes. We've been in anchorages in, in jungle, uh, finding tracks up, channels up the jungle, and get in there and you think, oh, this will do for the night, anchor off, tie off the sides. And uh, lo and behold, all my daughter's clothes are missing in the morning off, the, off their hanging line. Wow. Stuff like that, it's all fun and games. You Hard said with. building boats, so when did you build your first boat? I was trained in England. I mean, I built so you were trained as a, like, as a builder, you like an yeah, engineer or like architect? A, no, a, a, a shipwright. But, shipwright. Um, every, every kid with a fascination for boats builds their canoes and their yeah. small sailboats, which I did. Um, and I've even sort of forced it on my daughters when they were born, mm. two or three years old. Oh, here's your first dinghy sailing yeah. dinghy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, went back to England to train and um, uh, I learned a bit more after tech college and then um, and then they put me to work um, wow. and fix I was working on some very famous boats that became famous over the years um, and so you look back now with quite nostalgic uh, a lot of nostalgia but uh, uh, I hated it mm. uh, the work was very heavy um, because we were still traditional boat builders and um, it was extremely heavy and corking all day and all night and stuff like that and running a mast and doing the 90 foot of one shot with the with the plane wow and before electric tools was the only electric tool we had was a bandsaw generally mm. and uh yeah everything else was hand mm. but when the modern materials came out i tried to get out of it i became a technician for plessy and they sent me back to australia mm. um and i did a lot of fix-it things worked in the north sea on sidewinders Mm. Horrible job. Um, and then I drove my bus to India, stuff like that. But um, yeah, once the new material started to emerge, it was much easier. So like fiberglass and? Fiberglass and, and modern plies, which mm. actually last. Um, yeah, so I tried to build my own boats always for other people. Mm. And then I came up with my little catamaran style. Mm. just. I formulated this um, catamaran ideal, and we built. I built one in Bundaberg while I was running a marina there for friends, and uh, it was in my part time. And uh, there was an issue, 
So I put the boat in the water and we sailed with my family around to Darwin after. Hi guys, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time. I met Nigel like three years ago uh, when I first came to the Philippines. I've always wanted interviewing, but he uh, was busy and was going through some tough times and wasn't able to be interviewed. And finally, um, he's agreed to tell me some of his stories. And so we did this great interview. And as you'll see, I've got eight minutes here. And then we had trouble with the video and the camera and the microphone. And I did 35 minutes really interesting and when we went to play it back there was no sound no audio it was completely gone so i'm going to go back there in a couple of days and interview him again he's agreed to let me talk to him again he's got lots and lots of stories and uh, we'll double check everything but we still don't know what went wrong something technical went wrong with uh, either the microphone or with the uh, the camera that we're using and it didn't record the audio so just one of those things so uh there is a lot more coming of Nigel, so I hope you'll come back and see the next video, and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.